skills. You know, Secret Service, my special forces. But if someone harms my wife, Hello everybody, welcome back to Screen Stars. I'm here today to bring you my review for the 2022 action thriller Last Seen Alive, a film that is directed by Brian Goodman and it stars Gerard Butler, Jamie Alexander and Russell Hornsby. Now the film focuses primarily on Gerard Butler's character Will Spann, who is having some difficulties with his wife in the sense of um, she wants to have a separation, she needs some space, he reluctantly agrees, so he's driving her to his par to, to her parents' house. Um, and on the way, he needs to stop for some gas, some petrol. So he stops at a petrol station, um, he puts the gas in, she goes in to get a bottle of water, and she goes missing. Um, this then leads Gerard Butler on a desperate race against time to find out where his wife is, who took her, and how he's going to figure out on getting her back. Right, what are my thoughts on the last scene alive? Well, this one seems to have creeped up on everybody. It's not really got an awful lot of attention. Um, Gerard Butler is pretty good at doing these type of films. He's kind of churned out some fairly decent action thrillers over the years. But this one definitely seems to have been... Uh, flown over most people's radars, myself included. I do remember, uh, I think, seeing a trailer for this a couple of months ago, but it didn't really imprint itself on me or anything like that. So what? how, how good is Last Seen Alive? Well, it, it's certainly a pretty watchable film. I think the problem I had with this film is it's just very, very generic, and it almost feels like a TV movie, or certainly a low-budget film compared to the Gerard Butler films I'm used to seeing. Uh, it felt, you know, cheap at times, I'm not going to lie. It just it felt a little bit odd uh, in that sense in regards to the production values. Now, I'm not saying it's like hyper-low budget or anything like that, not at all. There is a certain amount of polish to it, and the performances are all of a good standard and all that kind of stuff. It just felt very insular and very generic and... Um, it just felt like it was a kind of made-for-TV type of movie for the most part. And the subject matter is something that we've seen over and over again. It's not like treading any new ground as well. Um, I'll, there are the character as well, sorry, that Gerard Butler is playing here in this film, like the normal standard family man. You never really buy it. I never really bought his relationship with his wife. Now, that that's in for a few reasons really. I don't think they spend enough time for us to develop any kind of relationship with them as a married couple. They do try and throw in a number of flashbacks in the film to try and flesh that out a little bit, but the, it didn't really do that job sort of thing. It just really uh, emphasised their marital troubles rather than the flashbacks. It didn't really emphasise, you know, their marriage and their good times or anything like that. And I just felt like we didn't get to know them as a couple or, um, or as people, really. Certainly not the Jamie Alexander character. Um, so I, I just, you never felt that urgency. For example, I'll give you an example, The Vanishing. The film with um, Jeff Bridges, Kiefer Sutherland, Sandra Bullock. I know it's a remake of the Dutch film, but I actually like the, the, the remake, the Jeff Bridges version. At the beginning of that film, they spend some real time on developing that relationship between Sandra Bullock and Kiefer Sutherland. So that when she goes missing, the sheer desperation from Kiefer Sutherland you buy into much more than you do here in this film. Now, I'm not saying Gerard Butler isn't desperate when she goes missing. He actually, he is, you know, he does a good job at that. But you don't, you don't, have, that relationship hasn't been fleshed out prior to that, if you, if, if, if you understand what I mean. There's also, I think, a pivotal scene in this film where uh, Gerard Butler, um, the, the gas station attendant, says the cameras um, aren't working. He says that to the police officer that comes to help him. 
But Gerard Butler figures out that he's kind of lying and he gets that footage and takes it to the police, which, fair enough, you would do. And then he goes to her parents' house. Um, I'm, I'm, this isn't really spoiling it. I'm just trying to flesh out like a problem I have with the film. He goes to the parents' house and shows them some of the, a picture of somebody that appears on the CCTV. And they point out that they know who he is. Uh, they've seen that, uh, seen a certain car before. Um, and then Gerard Butler, rather than report that to the police, goes off on like um, his own vendetta to try and track her down. Which I didn't really understand, because at that point he was under some suspicion with the police, which is understandable. So he's got some real concrete evidence there to suggest that, you know, obviously he's got nothing to do with it, and there's a real suspect for them to pursue. And if and if Gerard Butler could track this person down fairly easily and quickly, and he's not a police officer or anything, he's a, um, a real estate agent or something like that, then the police could have done the job as well. Um, so I just didn't buy that aspect of the film. For me, it, it turned the film on ahead and he turned into like a vigilante and he didn't really need to because at that point the police weren't totally against him. They were just questioning him and he was obviously a suspect as he would be in those scenarios. And the film's a little bit light on action as well. I mean, you do get some in the last 15, 20 minutes of the film, but it's fairly light. Um, and even though, like I say, he's not, he's not a trained professional, he's not an ex-Marine, he's not ex-Special -ex Forces or ex-FBI, ex like I say, he's a, he's a real, estate, real estate agent, if I can say it. Um, but he, he takes to the violence just a little bit too well, and he's a little bit too handy with his fists as well. So, you know, the, the Gerard Butler that we've seen many, many times before in, um, in movies of this sort kind of creeps in at the end. And I, I get it. I suppose, you know, if, if if you were trying to get your wife back, you probably would find, you know, um, inner strength that you never knew you had. But I, th I think it kind of crossed the line a little bit. So it's certainly a watchable action thriller. This It doesn't tread any new ground. Um, it does feel it's a bit like a tick box exercise. And it, like I say, it doesn't feel like a, like a big budget cinema release or anything like that. It does feel a little bit made for TV, a little bit cheaper. Uh, a bit of a, like a low budget type streaming film that I see a lot of. Um, but it's not a bad film. It's certainly watchable. And so it's a film that I'm going to give a 6 out of 10. It's certainly worth checking out, especially if you're a fan of Gerard Butler. So I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope you found it useful. Thank you very much. I will be back with more content on the channel very, very soon.